And then the narrator comes in and says, at that point in the fight, Tom Norris took an AK-47 round to the left side of his forehead. The bullet entered his skull at the orbital socket of his left eye, tore a section of his skull, exposing his brain, and cut a shallow furrow along the brain itself. Dang saw his officer go down and the extent of his head wound. His lieutenant had been shot dead. Knowing there was nothing he could do, he made for the others who had just taken a position on the next dune to the north. As he ran, he took a round through the radio. He still carried on his back, knocking him down. The round destroyed the radio and saved his life, but fragments carried through into his back. Dang picked himself up and kept running. It took him close to 10 minutes to reach Mike. Where's Tommy? Mike asked Dang when he reached him. Where is Dai Wei? Dai Wei is dead, Dang replied. And this is it. So, you know, your trusted Vietnamese fellow SEAL says, hey, look, the lieutenant, that's Dai Wei, his, his lieutenant, he's dead. And this is what you do. I'm going to the book here. I told Quan and the others to wait here that I was going back for Tommy. They tried to stop me, saying it was no use. He was dead. I believe them. I too thought he was dead, but I wasn't going to leave him behind. We never leave anybody behind. So no way was I going to be the first to do that. Had I been wounded or dead, he'd have come back for me. That's who we are. Dang said he was dead and I had no reason not to believe him. It didn't matter. And what if, by chance, he was still alive? I could not have lived with myself if I had left him behind not knowing or what the NVA might do to him if he were still alive. That whole area south of the bunker was littered with bodies and they would be looking for revenge. I had close to a quarter of a mile to cover and the last part of it was, was uphill, but I ran all the way. The initial salvo from the Morton that was the ship out at sea, although I didn't know it at the time, that it was the Morton shooting had made the bad guys think twice about advancing on the dune with the bunker. When I got close, I saw them moving carefully toward the bunker. From where I could see, they were flanking the bunker and moving in from the east or the beach side as well as from the south. I saw Tommy lying on the west side of the bunker. Two guys were climbing over the top as they moved in from the east. They moved cautiously and got within a few feet of him. I shot them both and moved to where Tommy was. He had an unbelievable head wound. The whole side of his forehead was gone. His brain was visible. You could actually see it. The front lobe of his brain was kind of pushing out through his skull. I could see why Dang said he was dead. I sure thought he was. I picked him up, put him over my shoulder, and started running. I also grabbed his AK-47 as I knew I was getting low on ammo. I hadn't taken more than 10 steps from the bunker when there was this explosion behind me from naval gunfire round. The concussion picked us both up in the air, lifting Tommy off my shoulder and tossed us forward 10 or 15 feet. I literally saw him move my shoulder, leave my shoulder and fly through the air. When I landed, I sat there for a moment stunned, trying to orient myself and catch my breath. Once I sorted myself out, I crawled over to where Tommy was lying in the sand. Once I got to Tommy again and started to pick him up, he spoke to me for the first time. He said, Mike, buddy. And that was when I knew he was alive. I said, can you run? And he says, I can run, but I can't see. But he really couldn't run. Then he blanked out again. I put him in a fireman's carry and took off for the dune to the north where I had left the others. I heard him talking now and then, and I guessed he was fading in and out. But I knew he was alive. And I put all my energy and focus to covering the ground between where we were and the other dune. <laughs> well, like I said, you, you know, you and I've talked about the camaraderie and the uh, respect we have for each other. And even though Tommy's a much 
smaller than I am, he would have done the same thing for me, and I know that. So, so uh, it's like you say, you uh, you know, if you die, which we're all under, we understand what our job are is as uh, being Navy SEALs. But uh, I could have never lived with myself knowing that if he was dead. I, I thought he was dead, but uh, with the grace of God, he's still with us.